Mirroring an Azure SQL database in Microsoft Fabric involves creating a synchronized replica of your database within the Fabric environment. This enables real-time data replication and improved data availability and fault tolerance. In this episode, I'm going to walk you through how to enable system assigned managed identity required to publish data to the Fabric One Lake, connect to Azure SQL Logical Server using the SQL Server Management Studio, create Microsoft Entra ID authenticated login in the master database of the Azure SQL database, switch database we want to mirror in Fabric, create database user to connect to the Entra ID we're going to create, create sales table and ensure it contains primary key and add data to the sales table set up mirroring in the fabric warehouse mirror the database create additional tables in the source data and mirror it and then add more data and tables so let's get started this is my portal.azure.com and i've already created my azure sql database so the first thing i want to do is to enable the system assigned managed identity popularly known as SAMIN in azure sql logical server which is required to publish data to fabric one leg so i'm going to come to this cornerstone it solutions sql server tab click on that and under the security group, I'm going to click on the identity and I can see the system assigned managed identity. So this must be on by status. And we're going to go ahead and connect to the Azure SQL Logical Server using SQL Server Management Studio and then log in. So I'm going to come to the SSMS and then I'm currently logging to the on-prem. So I'm going to click on disconnect and then click on database engine. And I'm going to provide the server name of my Azure SQL database. So I'm going to come to the online platform and I'm going to go back. And this time I'm going to click on the SQL database to fetch the server name. So click on this. And in the overview tab, I'm going to see the server name. So I'm going to just copy this and then go back to the SQL server management studio control V. And then I'm going to use the multi-factor authentication, the Microsoft Entra ID. So I'm going to provide the username, which is already populated, but I'm going to show you how to get your username in your Azure SQL database. So I'm going to go back and you're going to click on this SQL server name, click on that. And then we are back to the SQL server logical environment. And then this is the server admin, which is the same thing as the username. So I'm going to go back and click on connect. There we go. So I have successfully connected to my Azure SQL database using the SQL Server Management Studio. I'm going to click on the plus sign to expand the databases. I've got two databases, Cornerstone IT Solutions Database and Miro. And I'm going to expand and I want to see the single table I've got. I've got this superstore and I can query this within the SQL Server Management Studio. So we want to go ahead and create Microsoft Entra ID authenticated login in this master database of this Azure SQL database. So I'm going to click on this new query and let me come to my notepad. I've got a lot of script here. I'm going to copy everything and explain in detail. So Ctrl C and then let's go back and I'm going to Ctrl V. Now you want to make sure that we are in the master database of the Azure SQL database. So we want to create this login using my Entra ID from external provider and then we're going to alter the server role and then we're going to specify this and then we're going to add member using my entry id email so i'm going to go ahead and run the script in the master database place i'm going to click on execute and this has been completed so we're going to switch to the database we want to mirror in the fabric warehouse so i'm going to click on this to switch to the cornerstone it solutions that i want to mirror so click on that and then so we are within the cornerstone it solution database so i'm going to create this user with my entry id email for the login we created at the top and then we're going to grant control to the same email address so i'm going to go ahead and run this script within this database click on execute okay so this succeeded now i'm going to scroll down and then want to create this table named sales data so i'm going to have sales id as the integer and this is going to be primary key because this is really important in the mirroring i'm going to tell you the reason why we have primary key specified and then we're going to have this order date region subcategory product price, quantity, and sales column. So I'm going to go ahead and create this table in the Azure SQL database of this specific database. So click on Execute. 
and that executed wonderfully. I'm going to scroll down and I want to insert this record. So I want to insert this record for the 2022, just 10 records. So go ahead and select into the sales data that we just created. So go ahead and click on execute. So this has been inserted. I can just quickly query and see the data sales data table semicolon and then i can run this okay so this has been created within this cornerstone it solution database we want to go ahead and create our fabric warehouse in the app.powerbi.com and then start the mirroring so i'm going to come to this online platform and i'm going to come to this app.powerbi.com and in this case i've got this azure sql database mirroring workspace created I'm going to click on the new and then I'm going to click on the warehouse. I'm going to call this one Azure SQL Data and click on this create. Okay, so this has been created. Now I'm going to switch to the data warehouse experience again by clicking on this icon and then click on the data warehouse in order to access the mirrored Azure SQL database. So I've actually done some video on this mirrored snowflake. I did video on this just three hours after this was announced last year in 2020. Three, and then I've got a video on mirrored Azure Cosmos DB. I'm going to put them in this link. You can watch them to learn how to do all of that. And then I'm going to click on this mirror Azure SQL database. And then I'm going to see the new sources. Click on the Azure SQL database source. And I'm going to provide the server name and the specific database I want to connect to. So for the server name, I'm going to come back here and then click on the Connection IT Solutions. And then in the overview tab, I'm going to copy the server name on the side, Ctrl C tab, and then I can paste in this box. And then for the name of the database, I can go back and this is the name of the database I want to mirror. So copy this, Ctrl C, Ctrl tab, and then I'm going to Ctrl V to paste. And then I'm going to specify the authentication kind. Now, this is not going to work because in our setup, we're actually using the enter ID you know in our setup here you can see we have the enter id and the enter id so not the username and the password so i'm going to actually switch from this basic to the enter id so i'm going to come to this authentication card click on that and i'm going to choose organization account which is my enter id in the future video i'm going to show you how we can use the service principle to connect so for now we're going to focus on the organization account click on sign in so this has been set up so we can see organization account based on what we defined in this um, setup. So I can click on connect. Now, don't forget, we have a table initially called Superstore. So this, um, is, a super, this is what I'm talking about, uh, this um, Superstore table. Now, I'm going to go ahead and refresh. Let me just refresh this database. Right click and refresh. So I'm going to refresh that. So when I refresh, I'm going to see the new table we just created, the sales data table. And in the superstore, we do not have the primary key. So I'm going to expand these tables. And then in the superstore, I don't have any primary key. Now, as soon as we start mirroring, we're going to get an error because, because to mirror any table from the Azure SQL, the table must contain primary key. So if the table doesn't contain primary key, we can't mirror that. So I'm going to go back to the Fabric portal and I'm going to come back here and I can see the sales data table just created. And then when I click on this just over my mouse, I'm going to see this error. So this table can't be mirrored to Fabric because it doesn't have a primary key. So it is really important that your table contain primary key. And I think this is a downside. So I think we should be able to mirror any data, any table without primary key. But for the Azure SQL database mirror in Fabric, we must have primary key on that. So we can see in the sales data table we created in the SSMS, we specified the primary key and then we are able to connect without getting this error. So it is really important to apply primary key. So I'm going to click on this to preview the data on the right side of the window. Okay, so we have all the 10 records, which is absolutely cool. So I can click on this to select and then we're going to automatically mirror future tables that comes into that specific database. So I'm going to quickly come to the SSMS. Now I've got another table statement at the bottom so i'm going to create another table named product and then we're going to have four columns and then insert 
this record. So we're going to see that mirror automatically. So I'm going to check this automatically mirror feature tables and then click on connect. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with this name. I can click on mirror, create mirrored database. We're going to see mirrored Azure SQL database is running. I'm going to click on monitor replication. And then we can see the information such as the status, we can see the source, the mirrored database ID, destination, which is the one leg, and we can see the tables replicator, which is the sales data table, and then we can see the rows replicator, which is the 10 rows. This is working brilliantly. I'm going to close this tab for now, and then I can go to the workspace and I can click on the Cornerstone IT Solutions SQL Analytics, and we can see the sales data table so this is the table here and then we can start querying the data i can click on this new sql query and then let's just see all the record select star from sales data and i can run the script and i'm going to have the 10 records okay so we can see we have all the 10 records which is absolutely Brilliant. Now we want to go back to the SQL Server Management Studio. I'm going to insert additional 10 record for the 2023. Now, don't forget this is for 2022. So I'm going to go ahead and insert all these 10 records into the sales data table. Click on Execute. And then we have the 10 additional records. I can quickly query this in this SSMS of the Azure SQL database. So when I execute, I'm going to see 20 records. I can see we have uh, 20 records. All right, from the 11 to 20 is the 2023. 20, I'm going to go back to the fabric and I can go back to click on monitor replication again, monitor replication. And let's just wait. I'm going to just click on this refresh at the top. And there we go. It has increased to 20 rows replicating which is absolutely fantastic. Now I can go back and check this out and I can query this again. Let me just do count. So I'm going to count how many rows or records in that sales data table. So run. And this gave us 20, which is absolutely awesome. And then we can go ahead and create an additional table in the SQL Server Management Studio, the product table. So I'm going to scroll down and go ahead and create this product table and of course you can see I specified the primary key so this is really important and I click on execute and then I can insert these five records into the table and let's just quickly query and see select star from product table and semicolon to terminate the statement select and then execute so we have the 10 records again let's go back to the fabric and I can go back to the monitor replication click on this monitor replication and then there we go we have the new product so this is like a near real time replication which is absolutely awesome and i'm going to wait for this to show me five records so click on this refresh at the top and let's click on the refresh and we should have some record in there okay so it's not coming up yet and let's quickly go back here i'm going to come to the side and i can see the table and let's just get this out and i'm going to grab the product table we just created and i can click on the run and there we go so we have five records so this is how we can mirror azure sql database in fabric warehouse i trust you this video if you do like share comment and follow me for more videos because there's a lot to come thank you for watching bye for now